Uh, hello, and uh, thank you for uh, following me here. You know, third I see you. My name is Marcus Schober, and I have the next subject on the Black Man Stand Up movement here for you today. I'd like to start out by, uh, you know, taking a little bit light at first, you know what I'm saying? Go Vikings, you know, from Minneapolis and everything, and I, I hope they really do it to the Saints so that we can get to the Super Bowl and get them rings and it's, it's set up, you know, let Brett Favre become that, that big legend that he always is, and then take the Vikings to the Super Bowl to win in his first season of the Vikings. Go Vikings. I want to give you guys, uh, all of us in the world, on that. Thank you very much. I'm here to discuss mental illness, and I'm going to post a link to uh, get, give you guys a little insight on what it is that led me to this topic here, because it is really underlining. So uh, this is one thing that I learned in Alcoholics Anonymous, and that that if your loved one had cancer, would you cast them out, or or would you grow animosity towards them and be mad at them for their condition and their their behavior and side effects for that condition? Um, you know, would you treat them badly? And I don't, I don't think so. Nobody would do that. Instead, a rational person would gather information to prolong that one's life and better their health and possibly get rid of that cancer. Okay, so right now we're going to address mental illness and then mental weakness as well. Now I'll post a link, like I said, to show you guys the conversation, you know, that, that I came from this. I have to let you guys know that I am not perfect by any means. I'm still learning myself, and I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. I was shot seven times when I was 17 years old, and I wasn't always a good person. Um, I, I was in gangs, I sold drugs, I've been in prison, and, and when I got shot them seven times, you know, uh, I survived a million and one eyes, all thanks to uh, the God of Israel, praise to him. Um, so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to ID the two. All right, a mental illness is simply an impaired emotional or mental function. All right, it's a handicap. I mean, something's wrong up here that causes something to be wrong in your heart. Chemical imbalance or, 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 or whatever. And whatever causes it, I mean, it's, it's such a broad spectrum. I can't spend, I can spend the whole time just talking on this alone. But I'm just going to really just touch on the subject. And later on, we'll go into the, to the rest of them. Also, the weak mind. Now, mental illness, oftentimes you have to live with forever, and they don't go away. I have PTSD forever. Um, I have flashbacks about getting shot and uh, panic attacks and everything that stems from PTSD to the depression to the appearing of being bipolar, and, man, the list can go on and on. But the weak mind can be trained, and oftentimes is trained in a negative way and it's easily, easily corrupted. It needs to be trained in order to be strong, like a muscle in your mind is, like your muscle for your thinking and your thought process. A good exercise is to read a lot, to write a lot, to do puzzles, to do things that exercise your mind, your awareness, and your thinking process. A lot of people, as kids, are not given these exercises, especially people from my generation, which we call Generation X, where uh, we were the beginning of the crack baby to go into the 80s babies to the crack babies who are now grown into this world. And out here who have a whole list of these problems that they are impaired because they were born addicted to cocaine. We ain't taking this into consideration when, when, when we are dealing with these individuals. We are not taking this into consideration at all. All right, the weak mind could be trained to be a, a crack kid. The, the weak mind has lack of leadership training. Nobody... Uh, tells him, you know, the difference between a leader and a follower. I remember boys in the hood where Trey's dad uh, asked him, you know, hey, Trey, are you a leader or a follower? He says, I'm a leader. And he breaks down to him what a man is. He, he was becoming a beige, and his mom sent him to live in South Central with his dad, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, great movie. Uh, I suggest you watch it. Um, also, poor decision-making ability leading to impulsiveness. These, these are results of lack of social skills. Once again, going back to exercising your mind. If a child's mind is not stimulated through conversation, problem solving, or, or any type of stimulation at all when it comes to mental, emotional, and physical, you're going to have these types of problems and retardations and stunts in growth that are going to stem to problems as adults. Mental illness stems from a big spectrum. I'm going to start off first by talking about it. Addiction. Addicting to drugs, alcohol, and behavior. Some people are addicted to sex, gambling.
gambling, some people are addicted to shopping, other people are addicted to clipping coupons, they just can't get enough of it, they bean for it all day. People are addicted to crack and heroin. But they all come from a stunted, they, 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 they all contribute to a stunted mental and emotional growth. Alcoholism, for example, you quit growing mentally and emotionally from the time your alcoholism addiction takes place and it is full blown and you are drinking daily, nightly, around the clock and, and losing it. You, you start at 14 and you do it till you're 24, part of your mind state is going to be that of a 14 year old. Your temperament is going to be that of such, no matter how much you read or anything. You're stunting the growth of your brain and you're killing brain cells, which is needed for the growth of your brain. Also, criminal behavior. Anybody who's addicted to anything will do whatever they need to do to get it, to satisfy that itch. If you're doing illegal drugs, the simple fact that you're smoking a joint is criminal behavior. If you're not old enough to drink, the simple fact that you're drinking is a criminal behavior. The list can go on and on. They also result in anger management issues. Depression. Which all goes back to poor social skills now. Okay. If you don't have social skills, you can't function in society. You end up in prison. You end up feeling like you're going out of your mind. You end up becoming alone because you don't know how to treat people. That's addiction. Now, when you have stuff like manic depression, bipolar disorder, or PTSD, um, you know, they, they oftentimes come from childhood issues, things that have not been resolve something very traumatic or, you know, the, the list can go on and on, sex abuse or, or whatever, uh, that, that will also uh, spawn identity issues when it comes to people who are of multicultural lineage. Sometimes the white families don't like the fact that you got black in you or any other family really that isn't black sometimes will not like the fact that you got black in you. Um, I wonder why. Um, also, we have sexual identity issues, um, which I, I, I don't agree with uh, same-sex relations or anything. I'll let that be known, and I will let God touch you. Thank you very much. Um, isolation leading to antisocial and destructive behavior, um, which, which is self-explanatory. Antisocial behavior results in gang activity. Destructive behavior results in violence and self-destructive uh, type of, of behavior. You know, even drinking and smoking and getting high for days without eating is self-destructive behavior. Not getting the proper nutrition in your body is self-destructive behavior. Not getting the required amount of sleep is self-destructive behavior. Not taking care of your mind and your heart and your your spirituality is self-destructive behavior. Anything that will destroy you is self-destructive behavior. They also bring up violent and suicidal fantasy. Um, anybody who has just a manic depression, PTSD, or the bipolar, uh, suicidal thoughts and violent thoughts, as well as out outbursts and so on and so forth, is very descriptive of, of these types of things and also a sense of hopelessness. Now, if you have an individual that feels like nothing is going right for him, nothing ever will, and he has nothing to lose, and, a, and, and the one person that he felt like he could depend on, or she, loses faith, has no compassion, does not want to help, faults this individual for, for the way that he is handicapped, or she is handicapped and impaired, and cast them out. That's why we have high suicide rates. That's why we have high incarceration rates. That's why we have a, a, the, the revolving door swinging faster and faster through these treatment centers. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to tell somebody who feels hopeless to just do something for themselves. And you got to want to do it for yourself. Don't get me wrong. But you got to realize that when somebody's trying to get off of that rock bottom, they ain't trying to hear all that. We need to have these brothers be encouraged. Those who are coming out of prison, those who are trying to get their mind right because they had a bad childhood, those who are trans uh, are, are transgressing 